Hi, in this section, we're going to cover how BIN version 8 maps to CSDN version 3.0. Well, a little bit about BIN. BIN stands for the Banking Industry Architecture Network, and it was formed to really bring the different banking entities together to talk about how banks are structured and what they do and, and, and sort of how they do it. Of course, there are unique things in banking. And the, and the driver for this was the a long history of MA. Uh, so you can go to BIN.org and kind of see what they have to offer. The main differences and similarities with CSDM. So in CSDM, we really focused on how digital products and services are managed throughout their life cycle, whereas BIAN defines largely a SOA and semantic definition model for how IT services back the banking industry. So there's a common set of services, as you can imagine, uh, money needs to flow from bank to bank, and there has to be some level of commonality. The use of uh, CSDM, of course, is part of our platform. It's kind of common across all of the different products that we sell that use uh, common information about IT in the digital products and services. And by end, it is a vendor agnostic framework that's focused on the banking industry alone. It's very specific to that banking industry. And what we're finding is that there are also some enterprise architecture concepts in there that align pretty well with things like TOGA. The origin of CSDM, it's a relatively new framework for us in ServiceNow, came about in 2018. It's a collaboration between a number of product units that came together internally to, to agree on what those common definitions are and what that model looks like across our platform. Binance has been around for a while, from the 1990s, and it's driven bar largely by that banking industry. Uh, what you found is a lot of M&A in that industry as well through that time frame. And that really needed to uh, provide a more common way of looking at banks. And so you'll see uh, the interoperability, the M&A, sort of the consolidation that happened. They had a, a much heavier, I would say, influence on uh, from an uh, enterprise architecture to help through those M&A and, and interoperability issues between banks. This is the buy-in model on the left, and what we see in, is the CSDM model on the right. And what you'll see is these four different areas of buy-in. These four areas are very well aligned with TOGAP, which is a common enterprise architecture framework we'll find in the market. The first thing that really wanted to highlight is the business area where we have business domain and service domain that largely aligns with the foundation domains of company business unit department. Uh, when you look at the strategy layer, that strategy layer, that's kind of what you're looking at is what the business is doing, how, how things are working, how things are structured from a business point of view. There's a pretty much one-to-one -one capability based planning mapping here. So business capabilities map to our business capabilities. Then I think the definition is pretty well uh, aligned there. And we have also a mapping between the application service to our two objects, business application and application service. Uh, in the buy-in model, they don't really have the separation between the business app and app service. Uh, they just have one application service definition. But the, if you look at the definition, it pretty much aligns with business application and not specific to application service in that they don't separate out different installs or different environments. So that's something to keep in mind. The data object, for the most part, uh, aligns with our information object at this level. Uh, of course, in CSDM, we have a higher level, which is data domain as well, which could also be used. Uh, that might uh, align with data objects as, as well as possibly business objects within the, the buy-in model. The next area is the business service. The business service aligns largely with the business service and business service offering in CSDM. So there's a pretty good alignment there. They don't break out in buy-in offerings. Uh, we do. Uh, so that's a, a bit of a difference. And the other thing I wanted to mention is that buy-in has what they call a service landscape. They have a set, set of services which define what these happen to be. Now, the interesting thing about these service landscapes, it could be used in a couple of different areas, but uh, for the business service, obviously, but we'll, we'll look at this a little bit more closely in a minute. This is a blow up of the actual buy-in service landscape. So if you're in the banking industry, you would recognize a lot of these things that you would do, uh, loans, deposits, uh, trade banking, market operations, things in the middle that are very specific to, to banks. And there's gonna be some generic things like IT management is generic and uh, non-IT and HR enterprise services. So those are the things that you do in any company, but there's a lot of very banking unique things here as well. 
Now, I wanted to kind of point out two sort of use cases that we have with these buy-in service landscapes. We typically see them used in a couple of different areas, but the first thing I wanted to point out is there's a strong synergy with the business service de definition and the yellow things, the things at the lowest level of this banking service landscape hierarchy. If you can see that it does break down in the yellow uh, elements are the lowest level, which correlate to the business services. Now, the next level up, as you look at that hierarchy, relate pretty well with the service portfolio. As you develop a hierarchy of services, this is the higher level aggregation and where you can do some roll-ups or reporting and that sort of thing. And then we have a strong synergy with business capabilities. Uh, when I saw the buy-in service landscape, I see a lot of folks uh, using this as a starting point for identifying what their business capabilities are and be able to define those. Uh, of course, there is a mapping to buy-in already to the business uh, capability, uh, the ones that they define there, and of course, what we define in CSDM, but uh, it's, it's not uncommon to use these kind of hierarchies in the capability design. Thank you very much. This has been the buy-in discussion uh, mapping around buy-in and CSDM.